Welcome to the Freshman Foundation Podcast, helping you make the jump from high school athletics to the collegiate level and beyond with your host, Michael Huber. How did MLB top 50 draft pick Matt Mikulski get from Fordham to the big leagues? There is a tremendous amount of talent at all levels of baseball. You don't need to be a division one player in a top conference like the ACC or SEC to be noticed and ultimately drafted to play professionally. My guest on this episode, Matt Mikulski, is a perfect example of this. He was recruited by Fordham as an undersized left-handed pitcher and ultimately worked hard to develop into one of the best pitchers in America as a senior. Matt talks about how he has developed as a player and a person and how his willingness to improve made him a top 50 pick in the 2021 Major League Baseball draft by the San Francisco Giants. I'm really excited for this conversation. Let's build your foundation with Matt Mikulski. Hey, Matt, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thanks for coming on. I know you're, uh, it's a busy time for you. You're getting ready for the draft and everything. How's that uh, process been for you? You know, it's exciting. Um, for me, you know, I, uh, you know, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go last year, but this year it's kind of, uh, it's kind of all falling into place. And um, I'm going to be out in Denver tomorrow. I'm leaving, I'm jumping on a flight to go out there tomorrow and then uh, the draft will be Sunday. So it's exciting times over here for sure. Absolutely. Who's, uh, who's going out there with you? So I got my brother, my mom, my dad, and my girlfriend. Fantastic. That sounds like it's going to be a once in a lifetime, you know, experience. I'm, I'm excited for you, man. It sounds, sounds tremendous. Yeah. You know, I, um, blessed to be in this opportunity, like in to, to this situation and this opportunity that I have, and even going down to the combine was, uh, was a, great experience down there being it's the inaugural MLB combine, you know, first one ever and going down there, having a bunch of club interviews and being on TV, you know, it's just an experience that I'll never forget for sure. Yeah. I definitely want to ask you about that, but to take a step back, can you just tell everybody a little bit about who you are, kind of what was your, what's your background in terms of, you know, baseball and just athletics in general? Uh, Matt Mikulski um, from Westchester, New York. Um, I wear that as a, a little patch of pride on my sleeve. Um, I grew up playing four sports. I was a uh, lacrosse, baseball, football, and basketball. Um, in high school, I was a three-sport athlete. Um, and to be completely honest, like baseball wasn't number one for me for the longest time, you know. And um, it kind of really started to become number one for me when I got into high school. And that's when I started to realize, like. Hey, like it's in between lacrosse and baseball. And don't get me wrong. I love lacrosse, but for me, it made more sense being a lefty pitcher in baseball. So I went down that route, down that recruiting process. And at that time I was still playing football and basketball. So those were still, I still was playing those sports and I was getting recruited for baseball. So my freshman year of high school was probably the first time I really started to throw in front of college uh, coaches and stuff like that and recruiters and, for me, being a 5'8", 165-pound kid, not a lot of SEC, ACC, Power 5 conferences were, came calling. You know, I only had three Division One offers. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it was three. It was probably like three to five around there. And um, Fordham was one of them, you know. And it, the first day I visited Fordham, it was just kind of like um, – kind of just felt like the right fit for me. The perfect mixture of baseball, the the rich history that Fordham baseball has being the winningest program in, in college baseball history. And then combine that with the great academics and then even combine that with being in New York, you know, being a New York guy, being close to home. And then on top of that, you're in New York City. You, you got a 15 minute ride down to New York City. So I think um, that was a definitely a factor of what played into going into Fordham and Another factor was I was going to play right away. You know, I was, I didn't want to be a kid that was going to sit on the bench from freshman to sophomore year and then finally get my opportunity junior year. You know, at Fordham, I had 45 innings as a freshman and I was put into the fire right away, which I wanted, you know, I wanted to get the experience and I wanted to play as much as I could. And um, after my freshman year, 
had some ups, had some downs. I ended up going out to Martha's Vineyard for that summer. Beautiful place. I had an amazing time out there. And that's what really opened my eyes. Like, oh, wow, this baseball world is huge. You know, from Division One athletes to Division Three athletes to JUCO guys, like this baseball world is huge. So that's what really exposed me to different competition and going out there. And also it really exposed me to what minor league life will be like uh, on Martha's Vineyard. You got to take a 45 minute ferry off the Island every single time to go and play, whether it was Nashua or Worcester, you're going out there and you're, you're getting on the bus for another three, three and a half hours, possibly five hours, you know, to get to the game and then play the game. And then you drive all the way back, take a ferry all the way back. So I think that was an experience where, really opened my eyes and like, Hey, like there's a lot that goes with this baseball stuff. Like there's a lot of the mental side to it. And there's a lot every single day when you're doing a trip, a trip like that, it's, it's bearing on, on the brain for sure. But, um, for me, I think, uh, coming back my sophomore year, I earned the Friday spot. Um, as the Friday guy I did decent, you know, as a sophomore and, um, I just, was thankful for the opportunity. And I went out there, I did my best. I, I did all right. And, uh, ended up pitching in the eight ten championship game, uh, ended up beating Dayton that game. And then we went out to West Virginia, ended up pitching in our first regional, um, in like 21 years. So that was an honor as well, going out there and pitching in front of a bunch of West Virginia fans yelling at you and stuff. So that's just a great, that was a great memory of mine at Fordham as well. And then after the West Virginia trip, we actually, um, went I went straight home I was home for a day and then I went up to Wareham up in the Cape Cod League I was at Wareham for about 48 hours two days of practice and I wake up the next morning get a call from the Wareham GM saying hey like we think uh you'll fit better over at Brewster which is another team out in the Cape so I get cut from Wareham I go to Brewster and I'm on a 10-day contract I'm sleeping on the floor at this temporary house in front of the TV because there's 10 other temporary guys there who are on temporary 10 day contracts. And, um, I was one of the only guys who ended up making it out of that house and earning a full contract and then ended up rattling off a couple of good starts and making the all-star team out there. And for me, that really opened my eyes about the confidence. Like that just boosted my confidence so much. Cause I felt like my stuff can play anywhere at any level, you know, it doesn't matter what name is attached to somebody else's name, whether it's a SEC, ACC, Pac-10 or Pac-12 team. Like I felt I could go out there and compete with the best of them. So then coming back into my junior year, I was going to take on the Friday role again and um, had those four starts my junior year. And then obviously COVID happened. Um, those four starts were I was, I turned another corner and um that's when I really started to realize my longevity. I could go deep into games and stuff like that. And um, after that, COVID happens. I continue pitching and, and like continue my week-to-week -week routine um, as if the season isn't canceled. So I'm sneaking onto fields and going to different places, uh, either New Jersey, Connecticut, or my backyard in New York. Um, I would do that. And then after that, the draft comes up. Obviously, the draft didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Um, for me, it was a real moment of looking at yourself in the mirror and showing yourself what you're made of, kind of facing another uh, part of adversity in this crazy game of baseball. You know, and this is just another uh, another um, obstacle that I had to get over. And for me, my biggest thing was how can I separate myself from the pack? And we uh, we got to work. Me and my team got to work and. Um, we ended up doing the shorter arm action as well as trying to stay connected to the ground as long as possible. And uh, right away, we kind of saw immediate uh, feedback to the velocity. The velocity was harder, more consistently. And then after experimenting it in the summer, coming into the fall, making a little bit more adjustments, trying to be a little bit more deceptive. Coach Glenn helped me with that, turning my shoulders, keeping the ball behind me so the hitter doesn't see it until the last moment. Um, then we continued that into the winter. And then even when we started the season, you could see like my first two or three starts, it was, it was there, but I was just trying to get comfortable with it physically with my body. And then also 
get comfortable with competing again. It had been a year, almost, almost a year since I had been out there competing in a meaningful game, you know? So I think, uh, that was the adjustment that I had to make going back into the season. And then once I faced St. John's at St. John's, I believe after that start, that's when I just started to get comfortable and more and more confident after each start. And I think a big, um, a big tribute to that confidence was just every single day going to the field, doing my routine, doing the same thing every single day, dropping my bag, going to stretch and going to stretch lines. And then can you hear me going okay. to stretch lines and then um, doing my routine and then doing all that stuff before I even pick up a baseball. And I think that's why um, the numbers were so consistent this year rather than previous years. So how did you make that choice once, once the season was canceled, how did you make that choice to continue on with that routine as if you were pitching during the regular season? Did anybody help you with that? Or was that your decision? I'm just curious because it's such a big part of performance is having effective routines. Uh, yeah. So for me, my routine is always switching up. I, I always am a big advocate of, learning new things and mm -hmm. learning different stuff that can get me loose. And that's really what my routine is. You know, like everybody asks me, like, do I get nervous before I start? And for me, like what the routine does for me, it affirms that like, it, it confirms that, Hey, like I have put in all of the work that I possibly could have put in mm -hmm. to this. Like now it's just let it all hang loose, like let it all out and let's, let's go and compete. Like that's the only thing that, I'm thinking on the mound, going out there and competing as hard as I can, giving my team the best chance to win. And I think um, with that, like each step of my routine, I get a little bit more confident and a little bit more confident. And then once I get on that mound, I throw that first pitch. It's like unshackling chains. And I'm just like, all right, I'm ready to go. I'm out of, I'm out of it. Like I'm out of the, the nervousness. I'm ready to go. I'm just out here to have fun and compete. So. Yeah. That, that's a great visual, but that's, that's what routines are for, right? To put us in a position to be as effective as we can once the competition starts. So that's really cool. So I want to take a step back. You mentioned Coach Glenn. Coach Glenn was on the podcast. Great guy. Obviously, Coach Layton, Coach Porter. The whole staff there is great. You know, I was up there for a bit myself with you guys. I mean, great group of people. Can you just talk about their role in the recruiting process and sort of how that contributed to fit, but then also sort of what they've done for you during your four years there in, in Rose Hill. Yeah, actually um, my journey is a little bit different. Uh, Coach Glenn didn't come into the picture until my junior year. Um, and honestly, my freshman year, I had coach Larson uh, love coach Larson. And uh, I learned a bunch of stuff from him, but he left. And then after that, we had coach Franklin step in as our head, as our uh, pitching coach. But um, for the recruiting process, I think a big, advocate of me going to Fordham for the recruiting process was coach Rob Datoma. He's actually the head coach at Fairleigh Dickinson now. And um, coach Datoma and coach Layton were probably my biggest supporters and the biggest reasons why I went out to Fordham. You know, I was very comfortable right away. Actually, coach Datoma is from the same town as me. He's from uh, Shrub Oak, New York, or Mohegan Lake, New York. So uh, we, um, we kind of, I guess, crossed paths a bunch and, uh, yeah, it kind of just happened. You know, he actually coached my brother in freshman basketball, my older brother in freshman basketball, like a couple of years before he recruited me. So I think, um, kind of the stars aligned with that one. And then once I got there, there was a lot of coaching changes. You know, I, I didn't have one pitching coach for a consistent two years until coach Glenn with my junior and senior year. And honestly, I've learned so much from coach Glenn, you know, we weren't, when he, when he played, we were not the same type of pitchers. I was a, a power lefty and he was a lefty that was crafty. And I think having that mindset this year had helped me out so much because I was able to command four pitches for a strike. And I think um, he's a big reason why he helped me out a lot. And even like I was saying before with the deceptiveness, like at first with this short arm action, I was kind of showing the hitter the ball the whole time, but then just kind of move my shoulders this way. And now I'm, now I'm hiding the ball the whole time. So I think just little things like that, where he's been around the game for so long and he's been around such good talent for so long that he could just pick little certain stuff like that. So I think uh, I can't thank him enough for obviously the opportunities that he's given me. And then also the confidence that he had in me 
going out there every uh, either Friday or Saturday and just saying, Hey, like, this is our warrior. This is our bulldog. Like go out there. We're going to, we're going to let him go out there and, and do this, you know? So, yeah. So coming in, you said that, you know, you're a freshman, you sort of knew that there was a spot for you to get some innings and get on the field as opposed to maybe sitting and watching from the dugout. So can you talk to me about that first year? Like, what was it like going from high school baseball right the competition you were facing in high school and then coming in and pitching the college headers like what was the what were the biggest challenges that you faced I think the biggest challenges I faced was learning how to pitch rather than just throw right I was always a lefty that threw pretty hard you know um I think um another thing with that was the mental side I think like when you have so much success in high school and um you're you're kind of just mowing guys down and then you get that wake up call because even my first appearance in college, I did really well against Wofford. Um, I went like four innings, no runs. I ended up winning rookie of the week. So I'm riding high and all that. And then the next weekend we're playing USF at USF and I got absolutely torched, you know? So I think that's when it realized like, Hey, baseball is going to humble you real quick. You know? So I think um, blessed to play the game every single day blessed to compete every single day, but you got to be humble about it as well. You know, so you got to be, you got to know that this could be the last time you ever step on the mound, you know? So. So what were some of the adjustments you made that first year? I mean, obviously, I mean, listen, what you just described is something a lot of athletes go through, whether it's baseball players or any other sport, right? You step up in competition. Everybody's just as good as you are. It's not going to be able, you're not going to be able to just get by on your ability. You have to learn, like you said, in your case, how to pitch, but like, what were some of the adjustments that you were able to make in that first year, even going into your second year that helped you start to be able to be a better pitcher? Yeah, I think uh, mechanically a big adjustment I made my freshman year was I used to not go over the head in my windup. But I think what it did for me was kind of slow me down a little bit, um, kind of get me in a little bit of a rhythm. So that's where I was kind of like, all right, I'm kind of learning how to pitch a little bit here. Like I got to find the rhythm. And once I get the rhythm going, like keeping that rhythm, not trying to break the rhythm, having my catcher on the same page as me, um, all that stuff you don't realize in high school. In high school, you're just going out there trying to win for your for your buddy, for all your buddies behind you, you know? So when you're there, in college and you have to make adjustments like that in order to make it where I want to make it. Um, you got to find different ways to adjust your game. And I think mental, the mental side didn't really come for me until probably after my sophomore year, like when I was out in the Cape and that's when I really realized like, Hey, like my stuff can play anywhere. I don't care who's in that box. It could be a major leaguer or it could be, the worst kid on a division one baseball team, you know, for, for me, doesn't matter who's in that box. Like it could play anywhere. All my stuff can play anywhere. So that's, that's like when mentally it kind of like clicked for me after the Cape Cod league. So. Was there any one experience, one at bat or one guy face that like you could kind of highlight and say like, Oh, that guy, I know who he is. Like, I went and I, and I, and I beat him. Like, was there like one thing or is it just sort of like the accumulation of, Hey, I'm able to put up results every time I go out and pitch here in the Cape. I think it was a little bit of both. Right. So um, my first appearance out in the Cape was against Katuit. Uh Katuit had the best player in the league. Uh, he ended up being the best player in the league um, at the end of the summer, but I pitched against them in the beginning. And I remember having his name's Nick Gonzalez. He got drafted by the pirates last year. I remember having about 10 pitch at bat with him and then he flew out. But then fast forward to the all-star break. And when the kid's hitting every single scout just starts to kind of migrate behind the turtle just to see him hit, you know? So I'm like, Oh, okay. Like this kid, he's, he's a pretty big deal. So I think that was for like an individual one. But I think when you look at these rosters on the Cape and you see like SEC, ACC, ACC, SEC, and you see all these schools, and you're you're mowing them down and you're shoving against them it's like hey like doesn't matter the name on the chest like it's about like if if you can produce right and i think when i went out there that was my biggest thing like can i go out there and compete and prove to myself that i could and that's when it really like flipped the switch for me like i i have the confidence to like pitch against anyone who steps in that box so 
Yeah. So talk to me about the COVID year again, just in terms of it getting cut short, what happened with the draft that year, right? You, I, I believe you won undrafted that year because it was a shortened draft, right? Five rounds. So like, talk to me about how that affected you. Uh, you know, um, for me, after the, after we were told our season was canceled due to COVID, um, I just, I didn't know what to say to the seniors. You know, it was just, uh, those guys are my brothers. You know, we, uh, we won an A-10 championship together. You know, it, it's just still keep in contact with those guys to this day. And um, seeing them uh, leave, and that was probably their last time at Fordham, um, that was a tough pill to swallow. But then, obviously, you move on, and you, we had the whole COVID shutdown, and you're and at that point, I was sneaking on the fields to throw and stuff like that. And um, after that, uh, the draft comes along. Uh, I got a couple of calls. But for me, it just didn't happen, you know, and I think, um, yeah, I went undrafted. I got a bunch of uh, free eight, like uh, undrafted signing offers, like to sign for 25K or stuff like that. And for me, right after the draft happened, I already made up my mind that I was going to come back to school. And uh, so when that period came for them to ask, I was I was just leaving that on hold, you know, because I felt like I could go back to school and do a little bit better. And um, I felt like I was having a great season my junior year until the COVID season happened or the COVID happened. So I think, mm -hmm. um, I think with me, it, it was really just like taking a long, hard look at myself in the mirror and realizing like, Hey, like I know what I'm, what I'm here for. Like, I know what I'm made to do. And um, yeah, I, that's for me. I just decided like, we, we got to go back to work. It's time to go back to work. And that's it. Like, I think, um, the biggest component of that experience was like sticking to my guns, you know, staying confident and like knowing who I am as a person, you know? So I think yeah. that that was the biggest thing for sure. Yeah. I, I don't get the sense that um, there's too much doubt, you know, inside of you. <laughs> I think you, it seems like you're pretty, you're a pretty confident guy, which obviously you need to have to be a, a baseball player at any level, because it's just, like you said, it's a humbling game, but it's interesting because I was reading, uh, I was reading an article uh, before we got on and it was basically like talking about how you had to prove something, right. Coming back as a senior proving, right. Kept come, the word kept coming up, right. It sounds like that scene, that junior year getting cut short, not getting drafted was really a significant motivator for you to come back and say, you know what, like, I'm going to step it up. And when I'm a senior, I'm going to get to exactly where I want to go. Yeah. And I think people kind of get it wrong. Like oh, I had to prove people wrong. Like, I don't care what anybody else says. Like it's more so proving myself. Right. You know, like when I look at myself in the mirror and I, I know like, what I need to do to get to that spot. And I, I think it was more so proving myself correct more rather than proving people wrong. And I think people get that mixed up. Like, Oh, he went back to school and he proved all these, all these people wrong. Like, no, that's not it at all. I don't have any qualms against anybody. You know, it was more so proven to myself, like, Hey, I can do this, you know? So I think that was the biggest thing. So this this past year, your senior year, obviously was a lights out year for you, right? You know, your your numbers were great. You were a semifinalist for Golden Spikes. You were pitcher of the year in the A-10. Like, just talk to me about that run this year in terms of, like, how it went. Like, you know, just what was it like? You know, it just felt like, felt like every single game that I pitched in was the other team's World Series. And that's how I want it to be. You know, I want people... I want that target on my back. I want people to try as hard as they can to and try their hardest and bring their A game every single time because that's what it was for, for me this year, you know, being the preseason A-10 pitcher of the year. Every team that I played this year knew me, you know, so they knew um, that they had to bring their A game for that game. And for me, it just felt like the way I approached a lot of these games, and this is a, a an Elliot Glenn uh, – a <laughs> uh, little uh, tidbit that we worked on together. I approached these games like they were nine round, seven round fights, um, like a boxing match. You know, you, you go out there the first inning, throw, get your three outs, get your, get your shots in, throw your, throw your stuff. And then you get to sit down for 
for however long you get your rest. And then you go back out and you get your three outs, get your shots in, and you sit down, you get your rest. Then you go back out your third inning, get your shots in, you go down, get your rest. So I think that was a big thing, just short minimizing the game, right? Like get these next three, get these next three, get these next three. Like that's all that matters, the task at hand. Like this round is the most important round. This round is – or inning is the most important inning. So I think that was the biggest thing. I mean, having gotten to know Coach Glenn a little bit, I know what a big proponent he is of working on the mental side of, yeah. of baseball. And I think that that approach of kind of breaking it into smaller pieces and attacking it that way really makes everything less daunting. And it becomes more about the process of how do I get through this inning versus, you know, oh, I have to deliver these results over the course of a game, which like there's just too much that can happen, right? You just got to focus yeah. on one pitch at a time. Um, you talked about mechanical adjustments. Obviously, that was something that um, maybe was sort of getting in the way or kind of, you know, not letting you be as effective as you could be. Can you talk about the process of, uh, I know you've talked about some of the, the adjustments, but can you talk about the process that you had to go through to kind of make those changes? Yeah, so I, I guess the biggest change that everybody likes to talk about is the shortening and the arm action. Um, mm -hmm. For me, uh, a lot of people ask me if I use some type of sleeve here to to work on the arm action. And for me, being a quarterback my whole life, uh, the cue for me was just throw like a quarterback, right? And I think immediately I saw the feedback, especially just catch play, how true the ball was staying, how well behind the ball I was staying. And I think what I didn't realize before the arm action that I realize now is when I was long, my lower half would be moving quicker than my arm. So my lower half's already going to the plate, my arm's all the way back here. With the, with the shortening of the arm action, um, it really just got my body into sync, you know? And that's why I think you saw the velo jump. You, you saw a couple 97, 98, 99 mile an hour fastballs this year from just being in sync with my body a little bit more. And um, another adjustment that I made, I uh, that Coach Glenn and I made that I think gets overlooked a lot was my heel, right? So instead of having my heel straight on the mound, let's, let's say this is the rubber and having my foot straight on the mound, moving it this way and just thinking like it's a deadlift, right? And having my, having that back foot stay into the ground and use the ground as much as possible to try and get my foot through the mound and keep it on the ground as long as possible to get as much power as I possibly could. And I think that's an adjustment that gets overlooked a lot just because of how the short arm act, because the short arm action, I look like a completely different pitcher, you know? And um, I think um, those two adjustments were huge. And then obviously having that mentality, like, hey, I have the confidence from the Cape and I'm throwing harder now and my stuff is better now. Like, I felt like, especially a lot this year, like this team shouldn't even be on the same field as me. You know what I mean? Like, I got to go out there and just be, the guy, right. I got to go out there and be the alpha guy. So I, I felt like a lot of the times this year, um, I was just going out there and just, it was a dog fight every single time. And I didn't, I didn't mind it at all, you know, because for me, it's like getting up once a week and then you get, you get to have the routine settle in for the next six days. And then, all right, it's back to fight night for the next week. And it's back to the fight night to the next week. So I think, Having that mentality helped me out so much this year, and I think it's just going to carry on throughout my career. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, that's what I was thinking when you're sort of finishing up your your comment, which is, you know, you're going to have to maintain that mentality, right? Because the next level, from what I understand, because I was never there, from the people I know that have been there, it's a step up, right? In terms yeah. of the grind of it, right? It's a, it's a job, right? You're getting paid to do a job and keeping that day-to-day -day kind of lunch pal mindset is so huge because there's probably going to be so many ups and downs. Yeah. And I think like the summer leagues that I've been in have helped me prepare for the grind, right? Just waking up every day and mm -hmm. getting to the field at a certain time for early work. And then after that, having your whole routine before the game and then the game. And obviously after the game, you're, it's eight, nine o'clock at night and you're going back home or a hotel and you got to wake up and do the same exact thing the next day. But mm -hmm. I think what these summer leagues also really taught me is how much I love baseball. You know, like there's nothing I'd rather be doing on in the summer 
than going out and going to the field every single day. So I think um, these summer leagues are huge for kids like coming up in, in college and stuff. And I, I encourage these kids and encourage a lot of the guys coming up to, to play in these summer leagues, because if you want to get to that next level, this is like a perfect, uh, not, it's not the exact replica, but it's there. You know, there's a lot of uh, similarities between summer baseball and um, pro ball. So, okay. yeah. and, and you mentioned before um, about sort of when you're going through the explanation about your mechanics, right? Sort of m mimicking or, or visualizing a deadlift, right? Keeping that heel down, right? And so, I, I mean, I spent a little time in the, in the weight room there too um, at Fordham. Can you talk about like your progression you know, from a, like a physical development standpoint, it sounds like you've grown a lot, right? Obviously you're, you're, you're a big, strong, tall guy. Now doesn't sound like you were huge at one point. Obviously you go from high school to college, the weight program changes. Like what's that been like for you going through those four years in terms of developing physically? Yeah. I mean, um, for me, uh, when I committed to Fordham, I was like five, eight, 165 pounds. Um, that was, in my junior year of high school and then going from my junior year to my senior year, I went from five, eight to six foot. So I, I made probably the biggest leap in height from then. And then when I got to Fordham, I was probably around six foot, six foot and a half, six one. And then leaving Fordham, I was, uh, so I got in as a freshman, like six foot, 165, 170. And then I left Fordham being six, four, two Oh five. So I grew and then I, I got I expanded as well. So I think, um, I think I was a little bit of a late bloomer and, uh, my dad would always tell me that, especially like in basketball. Cause I was, I was a huge basketball player, played on like AAU national teams and stuff like that. And I'd always be looking around and all these kids are so much bigger than me. And I'd always be like, when am I going to, when am I going to grow? When am I going to grow? And it finally happened, of course, when I stopped playing basketball, <laughs> but you know, it, it, uh, it was, uh, a blessing in disguise, but at the same time, I kind of knew that I was going to develop like that. I kind of knew that I was going to, at some point, grow into my body a little bit more and stuff. And uh, I think physically, like in high school, I wasn't really introduced to a lot of weightlifting programs. You know, right. once I got to Fordham, you get that weightlifting program and what you're doing each week is kind mm -hmm. of just like uh, it's shown it's showing you the routine, you know, th that goes around the baseball routine as well. So. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was sort of getting at, which is, you know, I know a lot of high school athletes, like they don't have structured weight training programs. Right. And then you go to college and you're learning all these, you know, Olympic movements, right. The explosive movements, the cleans, the deadlifts, right. All that stuff. And so it's a big jump a lot of times for athletes who've never done it before. Right. But there's such a, there's such a growth curve there. Right. Which clearly like, obviously you grew up and there's nothing you could do about that, but you've also gotten bigger and stronger. And that's a testament to the weight training and the, the work you're putting in, in the weight room. So that's pretty cool. So obviously you're coming up on a big transition here. Are you graduated now from, from Fordham? I, I am a graduate of Fordham. Yes. I graduated back in June. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank that's you. awesome. Right. Sure. So you're, like we talked about, you're preparing for the draft, right? Like, so what's been like, the biggest thing that you've had to kind of work on through this process or like, what's the one thing that's been, you know, about the draft process itself, that's been kind of what you focused on. So this year, uh, obviously is a lot different than last year. You know, we weren't really allowed to leave our house. So yep. this year um, it, we had the first inaugural uh, draft combine. And uh, I saw that as an opportunity, you know, for me, um, being a, being from a mid-major school, it's not like I really get a lot of camera time and stuff. So, um, or these teams don't know the other side. They just see the, the dog that's on the mound, that's spitting everywhere after a big out and yelling his head off after a big out and stuff like that. So I think what really helped me out a lot was going down to these club interviews and kind of, uh, showing the other side, you know, and, um, Cause realistically, I'm not like anything like I am on the mound, you know, I'm, I'm very laid back and stuff like that. So I think, um, I think it was very good for, to go down there and do these interviews and stuff like that. And then also I ended up on MLB network, you know, that's been a dream of mine forever, you know? So I think, and, um, I think that was just, it was literally a dream come true, you know? And I think coming back, 
I, I'm really not that stressed, you know, I'm just kind of, um, just trying to enjoy every single day, trying to enjoy the experience, live in the moment, you know, cause this is only going to happen once. So I think, uh, that's what I've been trying to focus on, especially, I mean, tomorrow is a big travel day and then get there safely. And then the next day is the big day or even Monday is the big day. So we'll see what happens. So. What's the, what's, what are you going to miss most about being at Fordham? Uh, you know, the one thing I will miss the most is probably the community, you know, like um, from the athletic trainers to the strength coaches. I actually said goodbye to one of my strength coaches who's been here since my freshman year. Um, his name's Gio Grassi. I, I had to say goodbye to him. He had a, uh, he got a better job offer and um, you know, it's just uh, even the coaches and from compliance and even from you guys being the, the sports psychologists and stuff like that, like from the top to the bottom, you know, um, uh, it's just, I'll miss that for sure. And then obviously I'll miss showing up to the field, with my brothers every single day, you know, and I think, uh, yeah, you know, the one thing I'll definitely miss is dog piling on our field. You know, that's <laughs> one of the best moments of my life. So I think, uh, I think um, that's something I'll miss a lot. Just like the camaraderie with the guys. And I'm sure I'll have it at the next level, but with it's something that's a little bit different when it's in college, you know? So, yeah, I think yeah. so. That, that's the sense I get as well. You know, especially when you're competing at the professional level for spots, right? You're getting paid and there's guys who are much older than you. Maybe they have families, but at the same time, right? Baseball is baseball. And I, I have to imagine that when you win as a team, regardless of the level, you're still going to have those, those same memories and those same experiences. So, um, going into it, right? Obviously you don't know what's going to happen, but regardless of what happens with, you know, the draft in Denver the next couple of days, um, like, is there anything that you, kind of are looking forward to or you're working on as you kind of move on to that next phase of your career? You know, I'm just looking forward to, like I said, like the college baseball, when I came in my freshman year, the college baseball world was so big and so vast, but what's even better about baseball is that the professional level is even bigger and filled with more knowledge, you know? So I think I'm more, I'm most excited about the knowledge that I'll gain from baseball, you know? And I think, um, that's one thing. And then also I I'm excited to just go out there and compete. You know, I, I feel like even I pitched my last Fordham pitch was the end of May. So I'm just excited to go out there and compete again. And then I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can to help my team win, you know, and I, I know if I, if I focus on that, then all the external stuff will um, take care of itself. And hopefully I'll be up there pretty soon, you know, Absolutely. Control, control what you can control, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it applies at every level and every walk of life, but that's, I think that's, a, that's a good approach. So, um, do you know what that, like following the draft, like, do you know what that looks like? When do you, when would you go and move on to wherever you have to go to the next sort of the first level of, of, of minor league ball? I think it really depends on the team. You know, gotcha. it really depends on where I, where I land. And, you know, at that point, I'm doing whatever they tell me to do because that's that's it. You know, so I think I'll, I'll be living the dream. That's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. For for most of us, the washed up baseball players, it ends somewhere for everybody. Right. Whether you're 18, 22 or 40. Right. At some point it comes to an end. So to have the opportunity to play is is a pretty cool thing. And it's clear that that's something that is really exciting for you. So I, I'm excited for you. So as we, as we finish up here, I, I guess the, the last question I always like to, to ask my guests is if there's one thing that you could say, or one piece of advice that you could give to particularly like a young baseball player, right. Given the position that you're in, like what, what would it be? I think a lot of kids have talent. A lot of kids work hard. But are you willing to dedicate your life to this game? Are you willing to sacrifice birthdays, uh, your mom's birthday, your dad's birthday, your brother's birthday? Are you willing to miss out on family vacations for this sport? And that's if you want to be in my shoes right now, I will tell you that that's what I did. That's the four things that I did. Not only did I have the talent, not only did I work hard, but I dedicated myself to the game. And I feel like I have made so many sacrifices from when I was nine to now, 
You know, I think it's just to sacrifice and dedicate yourself to this game. It brings you closer to it and it shows the real love hate relationship with baseball, you know? So it's just, um, I think, um, that, that would be the advice that I would tell, uh, kids, you know, I think it's good advice. And I think that's a good way to end our conversation. So Matt, I appreciate you coming on, man. It was great to talk to you. I wish you all the luck in the world. I hope everything goes the way you want it to. And, uh, obviously we're going to keep an eye out for you, uh, you know, in your, uh, your professional career, which should be getting started pretty soon here. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. So what was your biggest takeaway from my conversation with Matt Mikulski? My biggest takeaway was that being humble and coachable can lead to long-term athletic success. Matt took his lumps as an undersized freshman recruit at a mid-major baseball program to become a top 50 major league baseball draft pick through hard work and the willingness to learn. Further, Matt stresses that the name on the front of the jersey isn't as important as the desire to be great and having confidence in yourself. My suggestion to high school student athletes would be to have a long-term vision to fuel daily motivation to get better. Where you start is not remotely an indicator of where you can finish. I want to thank Matt for his kind generosity and the wisdom he shared with the Freshman Foundation community. You can find Matt on Instagram at mattmick underscore 44. That's Matt, M-A-T-T-M-I-K underscore 44. You can learn more about the Freshman Foundation on our website at freshmanfoundation.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you back soon for episode 19. Mike Huber is the founder and owner of Follow the Ball Coaching, located in Fairhaven, New Jersey. He is a mental performance coach and business advisor dedicated to serving athletes just like you reach their full potential on and off the court. The Freshman Foundation is all about helping you get to the next level. For more information, follow along on Instagram at The Freshman Foundation. Please subscribe. Give us a like on iTunes, Spotify, leave a review, tell a friend. Most importantly, come back in two weeks, ready to get better.